Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to show you how to connect the Rode Pod mic to the Mackie Pro FX 10V3 audio mixing console. This is a very compelling, high value setup. I think a lot of people want to know what this setup sounds like, what's involved, what cables do I need. Do I need a cloud lifter when I use this microphone with this audio console? Do I need the pop filter when I use this microphone with this audio console? I'm gonna cover all those things in this video, what settings to use, what I would and would not use when connecting these two together. Now for this video, if you want pricing or current specs for anything that you see in this video, please check out the links in the description below. I want this video to last a long time, so I don't wanna save the video and have that locked in or baked into the video. So please check out the links below for current pricing or specs, or if you're looking to purchase anything that you see in this video. So the Rode Pod mic is a great microphone, and we're gonna connect this to the Mackie mixer. Before I connect it, we need to zero out the mixer. So all the white knobs need to get turned down, all the mute switches need to be on, the effects need to be turned down. A big one that I always miss when I do this is I always miss the clicky buttons. They all need to be reset to phones. I'm gonna leave the main level up at zero unity. That's just an old habit from when I was doing live sound all the time. Uh, but yeah, leave that at zero. Everything else looks like it's reset, EQ is flat, and the pan is centered. Now we're gonna connect this XLR cable to the mixer and to the microphone. Okay, it's connected there. So again, we've said this in many previous videos, but when you do your gain setup, you do need to consider whether or not you're doing live streaming or studio recording. If you're doing live streaming, you want this meter to come up as close to zero as possible without going over. When you use the USB output on this audio mixer, it will clip and you will have audio degradation if you go over zero with this microphone using the USB output on this mixer. If you're live streaming, you wanna get it as close to zero as possible. The louder, the more volume that your guests will have when they're watching you. If you're home recording, you can always boost it in post, or if you're studio recording, you can always boost it in post. So with that in mind, you want to be a lot more conservative in case you have a high dynamic range or in case you get really excited, you don't want any clipping, you want to leave lots of headroom there, and then you can bring it up and compress it and all that after the fact if you're doing studio recording. So with that in mind, we are going to set the gain here. So Mackie wants you to unmute the channel. We're going to hit this uh, to phones knob. That'll activate the meter there for us. We're going to bring up the gain. We can see the meter starting to move here. We keep turning it up. So here we're turning it up all the way. So we're at 10 out of 10. We can see that we're way past where we need to be. So we're going to back it up. We're going to probably lock in somewhere around 80% there. I don't want to go past minus seven, so maybe I can turn this down. Yeah, about three quarters looks about right. We want to go past minus 20, and we want to just barely bump minus 10 if we get animated or something like that since we're in a studio recording environment with this microphone. Now I'm going to turn this level up at the bottom to zero or unity, and that'll allow it to be recorded by the computer. I already set up the computer recording prior to this video. If you want tips on how to do that, we do have videos on how to multi-track record or how to record with this audio console. Um, now in terms of microphone setup, what are some good settings for this microphone? We just covered gain. I think we're in a good spot for gain. Uh, you definitely don't need the high Z input. If you want to insert a compressor, you can do that. We have another video on how to do that that's coming. It'll be out in the next day or two. Um, in terms of the low cut here, I find that the Rode Pod mic has a pretty good low cut already built into it. I don't feel like you need to add another high pass filter or low cut to this microphone. It sounds pretty crisp. It's not muddy at all. You don't need to brighten it. It's plenty set up already for podcasting. It's already built and like kind of predefined. That's the genius of this mic is it's really built for one thing. So they optimized it. So I'll leave that. We already set up the gain. Uh, for compression, oh, you can see here, I forgot to strike the compression. I forgot to strike the compression. So we probably will want some level of compression unless we're multi-track recording or there's some reason that we wouldn't want it. Uh, but I'll leave it up at about the 50% mark there just to 
keep it in a narrower dynamic range, which is pretty common with podcast recording. EQ can be flat. Effects send, I'm going to leave turned down unless we're doing a mix minus. We do have another video on how to set up a mix minus. That would be involving like a phone in guest or something like that into your podcast recording or home recording. And we obviously don't want it muted. And we want to keep that level at zero or unity as much as possible. So straight up is perfect. So now a question that we get a lot of the time is, I don't think we're getting too much noise with how hard we're pushing the preamp. Being at this kind of three o'clock position at 75%. I don't think the noise is an issue here, but a lot of people do want to hear it with and without a cloud lifter or inline preamp. So we're going to do that now. So I'm going to unplug the microphone. I'm going to plug it into the cloud lifter. I'm going to connect the cloud lifter to the audio console into channel two, just so we can compare the differences between the two. So the cloud lifter is connected. Now we bring that into the audio console. Now to make the cloud lifter work, the way that it works is it trades phantom power for reduced gain. So we need to turn phantom power on. We're going to turn this level up to zero or unity. We're going to unmute the microphone and we're going to bring the gain up. And now we're about where we were. We want to turn up until we're just bouncing off a of 10 there. Check one, two, just bouncing off 10. Okay, I think somewhere in there is pretty good. And we'll add the same amount of compression that we had before, just so we're comparing apples to apples. No low cut, no anything else. Everything else is pretty much flat on this setup. So you can see here that we moved our gain pretty much from 75% down to 50% with the help of the cloud lifter. So if you are running out of headroom with this microphone, you can anticipate uh, a gain reduction of about that much. So I hope this is helpful, but now we're going to go back to plugged in into channel one and bypass the cloud lifter because I don't think it's necessary for how I'm using the microphone right now. Turn phantom power off, disconnect the microphone, plug it back into the audio console, and now we can see the meters back and you can hear the Rode Pod mic again. Now another thing that a lot of people are curious about as to what this microphone sounds like with the optional foam filter. There is a foam filter, an official foam filter from Rode for the Rode Procaster. Or if you go on Amazon, there's a million third-party foam filters. I haven't done an apples to apples comparison of them, but I think anything that you buy for 10 bucks or something will work. So I'm gonna slap this on. So although this microphone doesn't look as cool with the foam filter on, I think it does a way better job of plosive protection and it takes some of the frequencies out that are associated with something like mouth noise. I'm really bad at it. You can always hear clicking inside my mouth. Um, so this will help with a situation like that. It doesn't look as good. Some people sacrifice uh, looks for audio and I would make that compromise in this point. I actually think it looks more like a small Shure SM7B. I think it looks great. So I, I don't mind the foam filter on this microphone at all. Um, but some people do and a lot of people are visual. So that does matter to a lot of people. Uh, so this is the setup I would run with this console. I'd throw the foam filter on. I don't think you need a cloud lifter. I'd plug it in. My gain would be at 75%. I would leave everything else bone flat. This microphone is already pre-optimized in terms of its frequency response for podcast recording. I don't think you need to mess with it too much. I hope this video is helpful. Again, if you want to see pricing or specs for anything in this video, please check out the links in the description below. If you have any questions or comments about this setup, if I missed something, I think I covered everything in the channel strip, but if there's something specific that you're wondering about with the pod mic and the Mackie Pro FX 10 V3 audio console, please ask in the comment section. I will get back to you. And also, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, we have a huge playlist of videos about the Mackie Pro FX and the pod mic. So please like and subscribe to see those videos as well. Thank you so much for watching.